the uh, issues and developments are. So how are you then carrying out that responsibility in educating the people what has happened, what they should expect? For instance, are people willing and ready to submit themselves for tests that they're conducting and sticking with this lockdown? Mm, yes, everybody, most of the community are all aware uh, of what really happened. And uh, in fact, most of them are coming out willingly, telling us that they visited the house. They were among the people that went for the barrier. And uh, we should tell them what next to do. And we educate them that some of them have to quarantine themselves in an isolated place for 14 days while the NCDC people will be checking on them from time to time. They are all ready to cooperate. And that was why we were able to get such a huge number of about 78 within two days. Because all of them are ready to cooperate. They are willingly submitting themselves for a checkup. With this lockdown comes the usual. I mean, people can't go to work. A lot of people can conduct their businesses. So there's, a, there's an obvious need, an obvious shortfall. And I understand that there's been some form of palliatives, but... The big you know, worry is the fact that this will not go around. In fact, the government said that this will not go around, and they mentioned some category of people. So the question is, what is the plan for others who, yeah, they might not be disabled, but yes, they have uh, some need at this point. Their businesses have been shut down. So is there any plan for palliatives? Because I understand that there's been a committee made up of religious leaders, you know, traditional rulers and all that. What is the plan for the people? Uh, yes, apart from the palliative to the government give the people of the community i knew of uh, a club that uh, give about two thousand household uh, two thousand people ten ten thousand naira and uh, the ODU of its own give about uh, twelve thousand bag of samovita and rice beans that will go around apart from what the government is given so we are fully ready because uh, this thing is worldwide. So we have educated a lot of the people in the town and we have made all necessary uh, preparation within our own pause, pause to ameliorate the suffering of our people. There's also this challenge of, you know, misinformation. I mean, you've heard people trying different remedies, local remedies, traditional remedies, just in, in, in a bid to forestall the spread of COVID-19. So I'd like to know what kind of sensitization are you giving people? What are you telling them they should do, they should not do, especially as you get the advice from a medical team? So what are you telling people in that regard? What we tell them mostly is to try as much as possible to keep, keep social distance, washing of hands. You know, right from about uh, some three weeks or four weeks ago, the government has given us a lot of soaps and hand sanitizers that uh, mostly like every 30, 30 minutes, one, one hour, we should wash our hands, use our hand sanitizer and keep uh, social distance. And you know, of our being what we are, yeah. Most of us here are educated and they, they, were, they were fully briefed on the need to keep social distance. And uh, in the case of the market where they don't tend to want to obey the social distance, the police and the civil defense are there to control the crowd. That is before yesterday, before the lockdown took place yesterday by six in the evening. So they have been observing the social, uh, the social distance. This uh, lockdown of, of a town will definitely come certain risks uh, that uh, may or may not have been uh, foreseen before now. Uh, from where you sit as the traditional ruler in that environment, what are the risks that you foresee that uh, this lockdown may bring to the people and what are your own plans with or without government's um, uh, hand in it? Uh, you see, uh, we've been following this thing ever since before uh, it was discovered that I uh, had uh, two cases of uh, coronavirus and we know the lockdown will soon go everywhere. 
So we had been preparing for this. We know it will happen. And uh, we know at the end of the day, it will affect a lot of businesses. Uh, because um, people, there are a lot of people that uh, they need to go out every day to make their ends meet. And uh, with this lockdown, we know the result will not be too good. It will bring a setback to the town, especially for those that goes on their normal business on day to day. And for everybody to say everyone should go in and not come out for days. It is a problem. But uh, it's something that we just have to abide by it because uh, it is worldwide, not only of us. Well, 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 uh, as we wind down now, tell us, is there any, are you dealing with any case or could there be potential cases of stigmatization as a result of what has happened? Mm, right now, since everybody is locked down, we wouldn't know, but uh, from other community, uh, it is believed that uh, when you are from Ofa, you cannot go to any other uh, community around you. They will say, hey, he has been corona, he has been corona. That is just it. But uh, they are calling me and I'm trying to let them know that uh, because you are from Ofa and uh, you work in Ofa, relocated to your village now because of the lockdown does not mean you have corona. So I'm speaking to their traditional rulers and they are uh, complying and speaking to their people. A case like that happened uh, yesterday when in the community an Okada rider, because of the lockdown, an Okada rider has to relocate to his uh, town and they drove him out of the town that uh, he has corona because he's coming from Ofa. All right, then. Uh, we do appreciate your time this morning and we hope that uh, everyone will just uh, stay safe as much as they can, perhaps with your help as well. So uh, that was His Royal Highness uh, Muftar Gbadamasi, the Olofa offer. Thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. Thank you. All right. So we're also trying.